Microphone check. Check. My name is Glendale Lancaster, and I was born in the spring of 1945 on March 7th in Stewart County, Tennessee, about five miles northwest of the town of Dover. I was born at home in a two-room house, and I weighed 14 pounds and 11 ounces. I know that sounds like it might be a lot, but uh, not so much in those days. With those doctors care at home, it, it wasn't uncommon. I'm one of five children my mom and dad, only three of us survived. One was born dead and the other lived almost eight hours. They were even larger than I was at birth and they were buried at Mount View Church Cemetery. As I continue to write, some of what I say will sound uh, almost if it came from an Abraham Lincoln children's book, uh, but, it, but it's my story, it's, it's my life. Daddy wrote those words in a journal. Uh, I, don't, I don't know when, we gave him a journal in the uh, about 2003, asked him to kind of keep track of uh, stuff he was doing and tell us a little bit about his life. So I'd have some kind of memorial for him. Um, so he wrote that and then he didn't honestly write, write a whole lot more. He ended up writing uh, some, some hunting trips, uh, hunting and fishing. He wrote about those a little bit. So I've got a good story. I'm gonna tell you about that for a little bit. But what I wanted to do was um, try to tell you just a little bit about daddy's story. Tomorrow is his, would have been his birthday. So um, daddy was born in Dover, just like he said, and they lived on a plot of land uh, out off Hickman Creek Road outside of Dover on, on the way over to Paris uh, before what is now land between the lakes. There was no land between the lakes there then. And they lived on a big plot of land that had owned to, uh, that had belonged to daddy's great grandfather, I believe Valentine Shears. It, I don't know how long it had been in his family before that. But they lived on it, and his grandfather lived up on top of the hill, George Walter Lancaster, who was married to Callie Shears, uh, Callie uh, Ruth Lancaster. Um, so they lived up on top of the hill. Daddy and them lived in a two-room house down at the bottom of the hill, and, and he called that the old home place. And he used to tell stories about that was his running grounds, and he, it was a little, little dirt trail that ran back into the land, and he said that's where he practiced football. He, without shoes or anything, he would just run up and down, the, down that little, uh, little plot of dirt. Uh, to stay in shape for uh, for football when he was high school, and I remember it because uh, my most of my childhood that land was there, and Daddy had an old car, a, a 1956, 1957 Chevy, you know the cool looking ones. He uh, his his had broken down and busted up, and they just left it sitting there on the road, and it sat there for for a long time, or at least you know it seemed like a long time to me when I was a kid, and I remember visiting uh, up to his grandfather's house, and they didn't have running water even in the early 70s. Uh, up at his grandfather's house and they had a uh, had a wash tub full of water that they kept under the kitchen sink with a ladle and I always remember I don't know why but that water <laughs> the water under that sink was the coolest water that I'd ever tasted and I kind of remember well, how's that water stay so cold in the middle of summer up uh, up under their sink but but it did um, so they lived down there and um, uh, like I said it was uh, uh, mammy and uh, granddaddy and then uh, daddy and uncle Jerry and aunt now they lived uh uh, right on the corner of well, it's Hickman Creek Road between the Trace and, and Happy Hollow Road is, is, is where the land, if you know anything about Dover, is just down the corner from Mount View Cemetery where, where everyone's buried now. So they, they grew up there out, out in the country. It was, it was country at the time. So they lived there out in the country and daddy ended up, the, you know, they went to, uh, to Stewart County High School and uh, daddy, daddy uh, ended up playing on the, on the football team. And I always knew that he was kind of a big deal in high school, but I hadn't really th thought about that much. And he, he never really talked about it that much. But last year when, when daddy was uh, at home, uh, just about to pass, I ended up talking to a lot of the folks that, uh, that he had played, uh, played ball with in school. And they started telling me stories. And it was, uh, it was, it was pretty amazing to believe. First of all, he wasn't just the captain of the football team, which, which I already knew. They, uh, they called him Pig Lancaster. And uh, Jerry, um, Uncle Jerry told me a story. He said, somewhere down in Dover, there's a... Um, there's a picture hanging on a bank wall or in city hall or somewhere. It's an old newspaper article that said there's 250 pounds, uh, 500 pounds of offensive linemen. And it was the two tackles uh, from, from the football team, daddy on one side and uh, this other boy on, on the other. And uh, that was when 250 pounds was a lot for uh, for an offensive tackle, but it's still there. But he was a, he was the captain of the football team. He was, he was all district. Uh, he was uh, uh, president of the senior class, and he was voted uh, most courteous. 
So he, he had he had it going on on there in high school. And one of the one of the guys he played ball with ended up telling me the story that Stewart County High School was so small that they didn't have a kicker on their team. And so every time they scored a touchdown and they scored, I think he said they scored 48 touchdowns that year. Every time they scored a touchdown, um, they would line up and go for a two point conversion. And the, and the play they ran every single time was to put dad in the backfield and, and, and give pig Lancaster the ball. And uh, he scored on every single one of them. So he had to be the leading scorer on the football team because he got a two point conversion on every one of their touchdowns that year. That would have been 1962. Daddy graduated from Stewart County High School in 1963. After high school, he went off to uh, he went off to Austin P. I think he, he was enrolled in Austin P for about a year. And he said that didn't really work out. And then for a little while, him and his cousin Cotton, I, I know, had moved up to, uh, to Granite City, Illinois. Uh, to take a job up there and I'm not sure what even that was or what they did but he he lived up there for a little while but um, a few years later probably around 19 well it would have been 1966 uh, early 67 maybe uh, Cotton uh, came to daddy and said hey uh, we need to go down to Clarksville we need to go down to Clarksville uh, go to the roller rink I've got a date lined up with this little girl uh, down at the roller rink she's got a sister and uh, uh, we, we, the four of us should go out. Well, that was my Aunt Bonnie. And uh, they went to the roller rink where Daddy met my mother. Um, and uh, one thing led to another. And uh, it turns out, I, I have trouble explaining this to story uh, to people, but those pair of cousins, Cotton and my daddy, ended up marrying a pair of sisters, my mama and my Aunt Bonnie. So I've got cousins to this day who are my first cousins on one side and my, my second cousins on, on the other. Um, so they, they got married, and uh, uh, lo and behold, Daddy got, got himself an instant family, too, because in addition to getting a new wife, he had, uh, she had her two-year-old son, and uh, that, that was me. So, uh, so Daddy got an instant family, and we all, moved to, uh, we all moved to Dover, lived down there for a little while. When we were living in Dover in 1967, um, they were living in a, uh, what uh, rumor has it, what the story is, was an old was an old Civil War hospital, which was supposedly haunted. And daddy's daddy wouldn't sleep in that house. If he, he came over and slept on our porch a couple of times, mom, the way mama tells the story, um, he slept on our porch because he would not come into that house because it was, it was supposed to be haunted. Um, so we lived down in Dover and Jeffrey Dale, my brother, and Jeff was born uh, in Paris because there wasn't a hospital in Dover, still isn't a hospital in Dover. He, he was born over Paris in 19, they got married in 67. Um, and uh, Jeff was born in 1968, so they, they got uh, they got married, and uh, we all ended up moving back to Nashville, uh, where where Mama's family was living. Um, and Daddy took a job with the city, working with uh, with Mama's daddy, GB Mitchell. Uh, they they both ended up working for the city, and uh, that's how I came uh, came came to live in East Nashville. And uh, we we lived there. Daddy and granddaddy both worked for the city and they both worked for a municipal auditorium and, and took odd, odd jobs. Um, it was, you know, I, I remember when uh, it used to snow a lot more in Nashville and a big deal was uh, daddy always got called in to, uh, to ice the road. So whenever they, uh, whenever they, uh, they called daddy in at uh, 12 o'clock to go ice the roads for the next day, it was, it was overtime. So we knew, uh, knew it might be a good Christmas that year because we're <laughs> gonna get a little extra from, uh, from his overtime that he was working. We uh we lived on a couple of places there there in Nashville and uh, Daddy he worked for the city so he went to work probably for the city in 1970 he ended up working for him. He ended up coming to live with us with her kids for. Um, we, we were over there where we were at. Well, because every Sunday we were, uh, we were, we were up back up in Dover, uh, hunting and fishing and camping. And, uh, the, the farther along it went, the, the deeper and deeper daddy and Butch especially got into it. And we had campers and we had bass boats and not bass boats. We didn't have no fancy bass boats. We had fishing boats. 
And, uh, and they all had uh, campers and boats. And we, that's where we spent summer vacation every year was it was a nine day camping trip, go down to, uh, to land between the lakes and, uh, and camp down there and uh, fish and run trot lines and uh, ended up sinking a boat one time. That's we were we were we were camping. We were camping and uh, at down at Neville Bay in uh, in land between the lakes and the boat sat in the water. You know we were there for nine days, so the boat sat in the water for for a good long time. And apparently there had been a crack in the hull of our boat. And um, when we we went off to go fishing and we had we had like three boats in in like a convoy. And uh, all of us were going to go when we had kids in tow, we were going to go around and go fishing and go on a picnic. The moms were with us. Everybody was with us. And uh, we went down the river and uh, and went to turn into wherever we were turning in to go fishing and came off the plane on the boat. And when the uh, when, when the bow dropped, uh, the water that was in, in under the hull just all rushed forward at the same time, drove that bow straight underwater. And one one man were riding on the boat. The next minute, there's really, literally no boat underneath us, and we're all just standing, standing there, floating around. The boat goes over and flips upside down, and uh, all of uh, all the fishing supplies and everything just get dumped in the river. I remember Daddy and Jerry and Butch diving, trying to trying to pick up uh, pick up what they could from the, from the fishing supplies. I think I think they saved a trolling motor, uh, but we we did that, and um, Daddy and Butch got to be thick as thieves, and they stayed thick as thieves for their 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 entire life. And uh, so even then, when when mom and daddy got divorced when I was a senior and got separated when I was a senior in high school, uh, uh, daddy got Butch in the divorce. So they, uh, they, uh, they, they were best friends for, from there on out, stayed together. Daddy uh, ended up living at our house over on Benjamin Street after mama, after mama left. And uh, daddy and Jeff were the only ones living over there. So I, I, I took off to college shortly after that. So it was, uh, it was just the two of them. And, and they stayed together and daddy was uh, now now working as a single man. He's probably probably in his 30, mid 30s, I guess, at that point. He ended up getting the coolest car. I've never in my life had a car this cool. He had a, um, I don't know what year it was, but it was a Monte Carlo Super Sport, the black ones. And it was nice. So he was uh, he was uh, sowing his oats at that time, I, I, I guess. But uh, he, uh, he definitely played the part of, of a single guy with just him and Jeff living over there and uh then Jeff moved out and uh, then the house, the house burned down though. Well, caught fire and uh, daddy ended up moving into a, uh, into uh, this little apartment. And he met, uh, he met Elizabeth about this time. This would have been the, uh, the early nineties. He met uh, Elizabeth and uh, they got married, I guess in 1994. So uh, Elizabeth and daddy got married in 1994 and they moved out to the house uh, where he passed away over, over in Madison, bought that from, from brother Bennett. Uh, a pastor of the, uh, was the pastor at their, their regular church, but a pastor at, uh, I think the church that uh, Madeline and Paul went to, I'm not sure, I'm not even sure where, where, where he was pastor at, but he's been, they've been around. So they bought that house for him and uh, moved out to Madison and got involved with the, uh, the Cornerstone Church. Uh, Cornerstone Church is just around the corner from, from his house over there in Old Hickory. And they got really involved in that. And for, for years, that's what they did. It was daddy and Elizabeth and they would travel with the church groups and they went, they, they went gallivanting all, all over the world with their, uh, with their adult uh, Bible studies groups and uh, were just really involved in the church. And if daddy wasn't involved in the church. He was, uh, he was hunting and fishing with Butch and uh, uh, Butch and Wayne Staten, who, uh, who lived up the street from us when I was growing up and uh, a couple other people, they, they, they put, they had a couple of hunting clubs, daddy and uh, Butch worked a farm together. Um, and then there was a uh, Wayne ran about a 3000 acre hunting club and they were all members of that. So that's what that's, that was his life for the longest time while I was, uh, while I was starting, my family was, uh, was church on Sundays with Elizabeth every once in a while, they'd do a, uh, do a traveling, uh, a traveling group with his, uh, with his, uh, adult groups. And then he was hunting and fishing and we ended up getting daddy, um, got, uh, when we gave him that journal, we asked him to write some of his early stories and some of his uh, some of his hunting stories. So for a few years there, he was pretty good about uh, about keeping a journal of his hunting club. And if any of y'all want to see it, I've, I've I've got it here. You're all mentioned if you did any hunting and fishing, if you were down at the farm with him, uh, he he talked about y'all and uh, what you did and what you caught. And the um, my favorite thing is my my favorite thing is everybody who hunts and fish, especially especially fishing. If you're a fishing uh, person, you've got uh, You've got a fishing story about the one that got away, and they always get they always get bigger every time you tell the story. But um, but I, my fa my favorite fishing story 
uh, was with daddy. Uh, daddy and I went on a fishing trip, which we didn't honestly do that quite often. And uh, it's my favorite fishing story. But every time I tell the story, nobody believes me because it sounds like uh, sounds like one of those fishing stories about the one that got away. And it just sounds too ridiculous to be true. But I, I swear it's true. I might uh, I might exaggerate just a little bit for effect. But I've got daddy's uh, I've got daddy's version of it right here. And uh, he uh, he corroborates what I tell. This was Saturday, April 9th. I'm not sure what uh, what year this was. Saturday, April 9th, probably 2004. No, Saturday, April 9th, 2005. Today is our wedding anniversary. Elizabeth said it was okay that Terry and I go to Alabama to fish since we uh, couldn't go the weekend before since Aunt Mary passed away and we went to the funeral. Terry and I left about 5.30 a.m. That's, that's the first part nobody believes. Terry and I left about 5.30 a.m. to go to Alabama to meet up with Chris to go catfishing in Wilson Lake. We went out that morning and fished until about 1 p.m. before we caught anything. We moved over to in front of the dam and uh, got a good bite real quick. Terry caught it and started to reel it in, but the reel busted and locked up. So he had to pull the fish in by hand, and he had to let it go back down a couple of times whenever the fish dived to the bottom. He finally got it into the boat, and we guessed it to weigh about 65, 70 pounds. It was about four feet long. We got pictures and then uh, released it, and then we moved over to below the dam where we caught a 35-pounder, a 20-pounder, a 15-pounder, and about six more that probably would have weighed about five pounds apiece. We had a real good time and caught fish that, that satisfied us both. We took, um, after, that, uh, after we caught those fish, we, uh, we put them in the boat, uh, we, we put them back in the truck and went over to, uh, to one of my favorite restaurants in the world. Uh, it was the, the Dale's Steakhouse in Florence, Alabama. Went over to Dale's Steakhouse and uh, had those fish in the back. And Daddy and I are, you know, sitting in, the, sitting in this fancy steakhouse, reeking a catfish and, uh, and talking about the fish. And some of the people who worked there ended up hearing, hearing us talk about it. And so we're talking about the fish and bragging about it. And I'm telling my story about reeling the fish in by hand. And uh, ends up, you know, the longer we talk about it, the longer uh, Daddy decides he doesn't want to get those home, those fish back home and clean them up. And so we just end up giving that whole, whole mess of fish to, uh, to the people who work there at, uh, at, at Dale Steakhouse. So, uh, uh, definitely one of my top two fishing stories, uh, uh, that, 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 that I've got. So I love, love to tell that story. Daddy, uh, you know, he, he went on hunting and fishing, do, doing his thing until it's 19, well, 2013. So, uh, so years go by. 2013, about eight years after that, Daddy uh, and Butch were down at the uh, their farm, the, the the hunting club, the big hunting club, and uh, they were kind of getting ready, getting their stands ready for uh, for uh, for deer season. And uh, if, if you know Daddy, the things he liked to do was he liked to go hunting and fishing. He liked to get ready for hunting and fishing, and and he liked to talk about getting ready for hunting and fishing. Well, they were they were getting ready to go hunting and fishing and clearing clearing out their stands and clearing some leaf, uh, limbs out from the stands to improve their sight lines and all. And uh, daddy was on leaning on a uh, ladder on a tree branch, I don't know, about 20 feet up in the air. And he's got a chainsaw and he's, he's clearing off the branches uh, to improve their sight lines so they could have a shot at the, at the trail wherever they thought the deer were going to come in. And something daddy must have done probably a, a million times in his life, if not more. And... Um, He's, uh, he's got the chainsaw and they're cutting down branches and um, the ladder comes off the limb. And so I, I, I've always pictured it kind of like a, a wily e. coyote thing where he runs off the cliff. He's on the ladder and all of a sudden there's just no limb underneath him and he's standing there and it, it falls down and uh, uh, he falls about 20 feet to the ground and busts his back. He breaks his back and uh, Butch is with him. Um, and uh, can't get any help down in there. Uh, Butch ends up going to uh, to call and get an ambulance. And the way the way they tell the story, he was uh, he was in the woods about three hours before they could get something back in there and get him and, and get him out and get him uh, rushed back out to uh, to the hospital in Nashville, where they said he had he'd broken his back and he ended up uh, being paralyzed from his uh, uh, seventh thoracic vertebrae on down, and that would have been. Um, well, that would have been in the summer of, of 2013. So the next few years for Daddy, 
uh, got to be tough. We were, he was, you know, trying to adjust to that and living, um, li living paralyzed. He and Elizabeth uh, did well for uh, a little while. Uh, and then Elizabeth got sick, uh, got sick a couple times and, uh, she ended up losing a foot. And, uh, shortly after that, she had, a, a, another, a, another ailment and, uh, and Elizabeth passed and, uh, then it was just daddy. Jeff and uh, Jeff and Shannon moved in with her for, for a little while. Uh, Jeff, my brother, and uh, and his wife, they lived over there for a little while. And um, and then daddy uh, daddy daddy got better. Jeff and Shannon moved out, and they had some. Uh, uh, he had another la a young lady living with him, and uh, he was really really doing well. Uh, he had just bought him a brand new van, um, and he took sick again. Uh, took sick again. He. Uh, he got something caught in his throat and it started irritating his throat and that fluid was draining in his lungs. And, uh, you know, if you're, a, if you're paralyzed, you, you don't have your diaphragm not working. He didn't have any muscles. And so his breathing had always been getting shallow. And, uh, now that he had, uh, had fluid draining into his lungs, he just, they just couldn't get it out fast enough. And it was a, it was a slow roll. He ended up passing, um, uh, last year on May 23rd, uh, May 23rd, 20. 21. So um, that's the story of Glendale Lancaster. Thanks.